Hey guys, this is Emily with Snake Discovery. Today I'll be unboxing and showing you how to set up a Cascade 1000 canister filter. Although we use this canister filter for our 75 gallon tank, today we'll be using it for a non-traditional animal. We'll be using this for our American alligator. And the reason why we need to replace this filter is because one day we went down into his room and we realized that he was destroying everything. Really? <laughs> he had not only pulled the bulbs out of the wall, out of the sockets, he took his timers and threw them into the pool from his lighting system, but he also pulled out the plug and, from his canister filter and knocked it over and it was just useless. He pulled the tubes off and everything. So today we have a brand new filter for him because we have given him toys for more stimulation down in his room and now it's time to get his filter up in working order again. So we're going to take this out. We've had really good luck, for the most part, with the Cascade brand canister filters. We've had a couple with some weird issues in the past, but overall, this is the best filter for the price, in my opinion. It's very affordable compared to some of the other, like, fancy brand name canister filters, and it works pretty well, too. Lots of boxes involved. The box fits the canister filter perfectly. And Cascade comes in several different sizes. There's the Cascade 500, 700, and the 1000. I believe they have a new one out too. We're just using the biggest filter that they supply because it's for an alligator and he needs a lot of filtration in his pool. Inside the box, there are quite a few different things. So I'm just going to pull them out and show you what all it comes with, first of all. There's a box full of tubing inside. I think this also comes with some, yep, the valves. There's valves that we'll be using and attaching. Here's all the tubing. For fish tanks, it also comes with these plastic brackets that wrap around the side of the tank and a strainer for the bottom. Here's the filter itself. this out of the way. Here's the filter itself. To open it, you have to unlock the, the blocks on the front and the back, and then you can push up these side locks, and that comes right off. This is the priming button, which I really like about this filter. Some canister filters don't have a priming button, which makes starting it rather difficult. You have to play with gravity. On the inside, we have three baskets. There is a basket for just general filtration with some floss. There's a basket with carbon that you can activate and use. And there's another one for more filtration. And we'll be adding some other things to this as well. Well, now let's go set it up. First, we're just going to rinse out this basket just with regular water in case there's anything kind of lingering behind from the factory. And the way this filter works is it goes from bottom up. It sucks in the water and it goes from the bottom through all the filtration media and then back out through the top back into the tank. And the order that you want the water to be filtered in is physical filtration, chemical filtration, and biological filtration at the end, right before it goes back into the tank. So at the bottom, we're going to use our physical filtration, which is just the sponge filter and the floss on top. This will strain out any particles floating around in the water. And we're going to rinse off these baskets too. The sponge filter at the bottom is rather coarse, as it will pick up larger particles, and then the floss will pick up the finer pieces. We'll throw this at the bottom. For our chemical filtration, this filter does come with some carbon that we can run through water until the water runs clear, and then the carbon in here will be activated. But I prefer to use Purigen, so I'm actually not going to use this today. Instead, Purigen does, in my opinion, a better job at filtering the water, and this is rechargeable, so you don't have to buy a new bag of carbon every month. This you just mix with bleach and water for a day, and then back into regular water to soak the bleach back out, and then you can use it all over again. So I have two packs of Purigen for every tank or every filter, so that I can be recharging one while I'm using the other. We're going to rinse off our basket and put our Purigen on top. Slide this in. Make sure that the tube here lines up with the tube in the previous basket. 
And finally, for our uppermost basket, this will be our biological filtration media. And for this, you can buy bio balls, you can buy chemstars, uh, you can buy anything that really just grows bacteria on it as the bacteria will naturally break down the waste products in the water. This biological media has a lot of surface area on it for the bacteria to grow and stick to, which is really what you want. The Biochem Stars is another one that I use from API, and that seems to work pretty well too. We're going to rinse this off after we add a good layer in this basket here. And then we just set it on top. To hold all that media in and prevent it from floating around in the filter, this filter does come with a nice guard that you just set right on top. We're going to fill up the canister. Perfect. Now the last and most important thing you're going to add inside of the basket is this o-ring. This will seal the tubes from the basket to the head of the filter that sits on top and prevent any uh, air or water from escaping. Unfortunately, during transit, these usually come in a little bit bent, so you have to work them a little bit to fit them on the tube here. Nice and snug. On the inside of the head, there will be an impeller that creates the water flow, and this you do occasionally want to scrub down when you do your regular tank maintenance. Just want to point it out now because we won't be seeing this after I put the head on. But you want to line up this, of course, with the tube. Then we'll add our side locks on first. We'll lock it completely with the front and back locks, and we're all set. Water will go into the filter on this side and back out into the tank on this side. They are labeled to help you out. You can't see it on camera, but they're engraved right here. Next, we're going to take this valve, and we have to attach a tube to it. This you push down as far as it will go, and then to tighten it, you just simply screw this up to lock it in place. There we go. Make sure it's really tight so water doesn't leak through and onto your floor. Now with the valve here, in case you're not familiar with them, if it's parallel with the tube, that means the valve is open. If it's perpendicular, that means it's closed. This will come into play later. We'll attach our second one here. There we go. We do want to start off both of these valves as closed. Now all of these brackets that come with the filter are used for general fish tanks or aquariums. They wrap around the back wall of the tank, and these you would attach to the other end of the tube just like we did the valves. But for this instance, since we're using it for an alligator's pool, we're not going to be using any of these. So now we just hook it right up to his pool. Here's Rex's room. He's actually off at the Renfest this weekend, which is why we're setting up his filter now. We call it Gator Daycare. And as you can see, he trashed his pool ever since he ripped out his old filter and made it useless. So we're going to drain this out, fill it up, start fresh, and then we'll set up this new filter for him. Now to prevent Rex from knocking over his filter again like he did last time, Ed built a really nice guard that we're going to put this filter inside of. There we go. Now there is a reason why this is blue and this is black, and that's so you can match them up with the intake and the output right on the canister filter, and that way when you take them off you know which side to connect them back to after you do maintenance. So we're going to attach our blue end to the intake valve. Make sure it's screwed on all the way, otherwise you'll have water leaking. And again, we're going to keep the valves in the off position while we do all of this. Don't turn them on until you're ready to start the filter. Now for aquarium usage, it's best to have the canister filter underneath the tank. So if you have a stand for your tank, 
put the canister filter down inside of the stand because that way gravity can help pull the water from the tank down into the filter. But with an alligator pool, we don't really have that opportunity, so we're just gonna have to make do with them being at around the same level, which should still work, it's worked in the past. We've noticed that once or twice, the input and output have been reversed on the filter, so they've been mislabeled. So make sure before you cut the tubing to fit, that you test them out first so that you know which side is actually input and output. Next, you wanna hit that priming button until bubbles start blowing out the other end, which means that all the tubes are full and the canister filter is completely full. And finally, now to the test for the motor to make sure it works. Take that plug, plug it right on in. Sounds like it's working. You'll have to help prime it a little bit. to get it going. It'll go really quiet once it's finally out of bubbles. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's running. And that's the... Oh. That is out. So it is labeled correctly on this one. That's good. It's running really well. And note that we had a tougher time getting it primed and started because these are at the same level. When you have your canister filter underneath your tank, you'll have gravity on your side, so it'll be much easier to prime and to start up. Now that we know it works, we're going to unplug it, shut off these valves so the canister stays full of water, and we're going to cut it to size so there isn't all this extra tubing. By the way, we have a basket in here so our alligator doesn't chew up the uh, tubes, which he's done in the past. Next, we're going to cut the output tube so that we can put this inline Hydor brand uh, water heater in there. This, by the way, used to be on the wall here, but our alligator ripped it off along with a lot of the paint, so that's why this looks a little funky. We're going to take off the old Velcro that has the paint on it, replace this, and set it right inside the tube and have it attached to the wall. Remember to always measure twice and cut once, by the way, because you only get one shot at this. It'll drip a little, but the valve is closed, so it shouldn't drip too much. And this is the same thing as attaching the valves to the tube. Make sure you follow the flow direction so that it's going in the same direction. We're going to tighten it. Set the temp. Then we'll open up our valves, plug it in, and now the water is going from the pool into the filter, it's getting cleaned, and then it's getting shot out through this tube through the heater, which will heat up the water before it leads back into the pool. This we do have to plug in separately, but I'm just going to let the water run a little bit first and then I'll plug it in and it should be good to go. Now that the heater's had some water running through it and it can kind of tell what temperature it already is, we're going to plug it in. And this light means that it's currently heating the water. We've had really good luck with this brand of um, inline heater. He's gone through three filters and this is still the same heater we've had for all of them. It's very durable is what we've learned and it lasts a long time. Now we should have a well-protected filter and a running heater-filter combo for his pool and we'll put Rex back in tonight and we'll see what he thinks. Hey Rex. Hi buddy. How are you? Turn you around. Go this way. You smell like pee. Okay. Moment of truth. Did you eat a lot of turkey at the Renaissance Fest today? He looks oh. fat. He does. He ate a lot of treats. I'd say he likes it though. Well, normally he normally jumps right back out, so. Yep, 
It's gonna dive around a bit. Good boy, Rex. Well, I'd say it's a success. As he jumps out. <laughs>